A coin! <laughs> is it a wheat penny? Yeah, it's a weedy. Is that good? Woo! All right. Today we're going to explore, well this afternoon, we're going to explore another one of those World War II era camps. And we're uh, 10, 15 miles out of Needles, California. Just kind of like in, just not too far into California from Arizona. Now the reason we're going to do this today is because I had truck troubles. I don't know if you remember a few videos back. I said I could smell something weird and there was a little bit of smoke. Uh, coming from my truck and I just thought it was a brakes because I was I get terrible brakes on this thing It seems like they're always locking up and I'm working on them But as it turns out it was a serping serpentine belt or actually another little belt next to it But it blew on me and I ended up having to get towed from way up on I-40 I was thank God I was on the interstate uh, From I-40 down to needles, which is like 50 miles or something like that. Maybe 60 cost me a thousand dollars like nine hundred and ninety eight dollars just for the tow and then it cost me an additional like seven or eight hundred dollars for the repair which you know i could have done myself pretty simply at home anyway it's another big world war ii camp was here from 42 43 they train i think infantry and armor here both it's right along a major road as you can see but it extends a long way down past where those vehicles are uh, all the way down to the bottom and about like a half a mile that way huge huge camp from what i've read about it there's talk like there's a lot of like exploded artillery shell fragments and stuff all over the place out there so we're gonna go look and see if we can find one or two of those um just to see if we can find a relic can't keep them but we can look for them and it's super freaking windy again today Hopefully when we get down off the top here, uh, it'll be a little less windy, but I kind of doubt it since there's really no trees, as you can see. All right, let's look at the little sign. Jeez, if we can walk, that thing's flapping. I'll take a quick picture of this for you so you can read all about it and I'll post it, but we're gonna go down this road as far as they'll let us go, jump out of the truck, look around a little bit and take a hike up toward those mountains. <laughs> oh. The day's like half over, so I figured we'd do something close uh, so we don't have to drive too far. Away we go. Uh, I just read the sign. It looked like this camp is noted for the anti-aircraft uh, artillery. It's a nice walk out there. I actually had to put in full drive already. Yeah, I'm not going to go any further than this. Because of this wind, this might be kind of a short video because I don't know how that's going to turn out. Once we get in the bottom, it might be better, but I think we're not going to get any better. So I'm going to leave the truck right there. All right, so I just stopped a minute to uh, consult my map because I see something interesting. There's a sign, there's a post over there. And whenever you see posts out in areas, I guess it sometimes means something. See the troll train down there? Lots, and there's actually another one coming around. There's a big hook right there, and there's a couple of trains moving around. Way up there, you can see my truck. And as I was getting, there's a, that's the highway over there, you can see a vehicle moving. And as I was uh, getting ready to get my camera out to look at that, I happened to look down and there is cartridges here. Now that looks like a 7.62. Well, a, uh, like for an SKS or something. I'm pretty sure that's something you like you shoot out of a uh, SKS or AK-47 or something like that. It's a pretty popular uh, little plinking weapons i'm kind of feeling a little bit like a duty head um wow uh, see the semi on distance you see a little truck out there firing ranges are down in this area somewhere but i'm not having any luck finding them don't give up yet though you know me hook them up with something before this is over even if it's a big old rattlesnake on the ankle <laughs> starting to see more cans down peaches cans down here so this could have been an area where the soldiers were hanging out. A motorcycle. There's something here. I don't know if this is World War II era or just some other junk, but it's a different kind of dirt. Lots of bottles broken. Obviously, uh, I think someone's probably been shooting at them from down there. <laughs> could be soldiers. I don't know, some old, there's uh, some older glass. That's a Coke bottle. It'd be nice if we could find a round or two to kind of see what they are. I suspect this is period. I suspect this is World War II era. What kind of can is that? That kind of a top on. I'm not sure. 
Uh, so what, where's a penny? A coin! <laughs> Is it a wheat penny? Yeah, it's a weedy. So that could actually be World War II era. Can you read it? That's like 19 something. I think it was yesterday or the day before where I said I felt like I was going to find one, but we finally did. Let's look around some more. There's a whole bunch of silver dollars down here they were shooting at. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, I have, a, I have a good feeling about this. I think if we went out that way, not too far, we'd probably find some cartridges, fired cartridges, and we will do that. That's something we found something that we can't keep. I started to notice some little bumps like that in here, and, and as I was walking over, I just came across this cartridge. Yeah, 43. I guess that's a 30, uh, 30 caliber, uh, like an M1 carbine. Let's look around and see if there's some more cartridges. It shouldn't be just one. Might be part of the firing range. These are pretty short range. Yeah, there's more in here. I'm just gonna pick a couple of them up and take a picture of them. This weird old like toe or something to a boot. Seems like it's really old. I don't know what it's made out of. Probably rubber. Definitely a lot of artifacts over here. Well, cans. So something was going on here. What are those little pails for? I'll have to take a picture of that. So maybe it's a paint pail. I don't know. Hey, what's that thing? That's weird. I don't know what that is. So, yeah, it must have something to do with the military. I mean, I don't know who else would build that on the berm out here. Interesting. <laughs> cool. I'll have to take a picture of that. There's a bunch of um, kind of a weird small wire here. I'm not sure what kind of wire that is. It's just solid, but it's got, you know, loaded with the... Um, cans from World War II, so I imagine it's related to that. It's not really like fence wire. There's a bullet holes in that can, huh? Look over here. This looks like a big burn pit or, you know, burning. Oh, you know what? That's coal or something, and this is all uh, metal that they've chopped up for some reason. It's probably railroad related, I would guess. That's probably coal. I don't know. Huh. cans <laughs> starting to come across these insulators you know those are real you know probably used on the railroad and they're of course all smashed so imagine they use them for target practice i'm kind of working my way along a trench here that's been dug and um i find a lot of cans and some of them have that solder on them and i don't really know if we were still doing that in the 1940s. I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, maybe. I'm assuming it's for all World War II, but I don't know about that. A little bit of wood, a lot of uh, a lot of broken glass and cans. So they were definitely out here doing stuff. Someone. But whoo. Okay, I think I figured out what's going on with these uh, cans that look too old. I think this berm we're next to is actually the old railroad line that made a really sharp bend and when they made bigger engines they had to make the the sweep a little bit wider you know a little not quite as narrow so they moved it over a couple hundred yards so i think this is the old line that might have been built in you know the late 1800s maybe early 1900s and that's why those cans are older than the world war ii stuff we're finding that's my theory anyway. In fact, this berm behind me that's full of air railroad spikes is the old berm. Well, we have some miles to go and it's all uphill with the wind blowing in my face. So it's not gonna be a pleasant walk. I won't make you suffer, I promise. I did say I wouldn't make you suffer, but I'm not gonna let you off the hook completely. This is a miserable hike. I just stumbled upon these, which I think is kind of odd. I thought I'd show them to you. Oh boy, hey, maybe they're grays. I don't know why anybody would pile rocks up like that. You can see like maybe rats have done the little ones. Something going on there. That's where Artie Murphy lies. Well, that was brutal. That was a hard hike, man. Oh, man. Almost broke out in Yellow Bird. Into Yellow Bird on that one. 
so glad to be in the driveway. My face is so red. <sighs> okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drive west, and uh, my tow truck driver was telling me about a couple mines, three mines, he said, that are in this big hill over here. We're gonna see if we can see the entrances to those. And if we can, we might come back to those maybe later tonight after it gets dark or we can't see anymore. Uh, but first, we're going to go look at, um, when I was at another camp, probably the video just before this, when we were driving out, I looked over and I saw these berms out there, you know, in the desert. And I said, that looks like a shooting range. I may or may not show you the clip, but that's what I did. And I was talking to the guy and he said, that's exactly what it is. That's where they had... A bunch of shooting shooting ranges out there so i just want to go out there and look just to see if that's true one just to see if you know i figured it out and two <laughs> see if you're telling me the truth <laughs> um because if he's if they're not shooting ranges then maybe we won't look too hard for the caves or for the mines anyway let's get going i'll get the beast turned around and we'll hit the road it's not too far maybe about 15 20 minutes max <laughs> Longer thing is, <laughs> the old caterpillar creeping along. Miraculous um, switching off, because I tell you, it's just a, an amazing amount of uh, freight trains here. But how do they pass each other? Whoop, just like this, just like this lady's gonna pass me again. Yeah, I guess we ought to speed up just like she is because we have to get across the track before that train comes. Otherwise, we'll be here a while. This is moving pretty slow. Here comes another one. I hope they have good watches. They don't need no stinking watches. The old historic Route 66, I just, just figured that out. Oh. The guy that told me, the tow truck driver, he lives right back there, I just saw the truck. <laughs> Pretty funny. I actually broke down about another 30 miles up the road. So this is the exit we're gonna get off, and you'll notice that, you'll see like uh, tractor trailer just kind of pulled off on the side of the road. And that's where they have to sleep because a lot we don't have enough rest areas in this country to handle all of the trucks uh, you know like uh, rest areas or truck stops so a lot of the guys have to just pull off the side of the road that's why there's so much trash and they'll sleep there the thing is you guys they don't know i mean the truck drivers have to keep a log and they can only drive so many hours in a day and only so many hours in a stretch i think and they have to keep a log and they can get pulled over at any time or at any of these scales when they go over it. And uh, the authorities look at their logbook. And if anything's messed up, like they're uh, driving too much or they're fudging, you know, they're, if, they, if they figure something out that's not right, they'll lose their license. Uh, so it's very important that they have places to sleep. And unfortunately, they have to sleep on the side of the road a lot. Like if we came down here in another hour or two, uh, just after dark, I mean, there'd probably be dozens of trucks there. Pulled over to look at the phone and uh, I'm stuck in the sand, <laughs> like really soft sand. I had to put it, had to get lock and lock out the. I had to get out and lock the hubs. I have to put it in four wheel drive. And hopefully, crawl out of here. Uh, my tires have a lot of air in them, so they're not very good in sand. Come on, Bella. There we go. I can't see a thing. Looking at the. Uh, Google Earth, I actually see some anomalies over here I want to check out, but the actual mounds are a little bit further up here. The road should go right to them. Alright, I'll let you know when we get there. should bring us right to them. I think there's somebody there camped, I'm not sure. God, I can't see. It's a local rumor that Patton buried a whole bunch of tanks out here to hide them so that when the Japanese invaded the mainland, sorry about that. <laughs> when the Japanese invaded the mainland, they could dig them up and start fighting them. <laughs> That's what some of the locals believe anyway. Probably did bury some equipment out here, but I doubt they buried tanks. Yeah, I don't know what this is all about, but we want to find out. Here, we'll get there. We'll hop out and check this one out. Let's see what it is. Wait, there we go. God, I think the road ends. No, there it goes up there in the sun. All right, let's stop here. Okay, we have reached Burmage, and I see nothing that tells me what they are. 
Uh, basically what we have though is a series of these going across the desert one you can see another one down by that truck and there's like five or six of them going across here and i don't know what they are i don't know what they were doing why they did this i'm not really seeing much in the way of artifacts or any evidence of anything i thought there might be little firing ranges but i'm not so sure now all right sorry about that it wasn't very exciting it's amazing how much easier it is to see when the sun's to your back uh, like I said, they, you can camp out any of these places and legally you're only supposed to stay in one spot for 14 days, but then you can move like 50 feet and technically you're in another spot, I guess. Two weeks. Whenever I see those like old beat up campers like that, that are like, who knows, maybe, what the hell is that? <laughs> Sorry, that's back up a <laughs> Saw something weird. Might be a landmine. Like a landmine down there. That's a clay bird. I always wonder if maybe there's like some old guy in there that's been dead for like five years. You know, because the camper's sitting there and all the curtains are pulled tight, you know, and it's like, can't look out, can't look in. <laughs> kind of morbid, but I guess the ranger checks on them every once in a while. I don't know. Every couple of years. All right, kids, I'm signing off. We'll see you in the morning. It's going to be a cold one tonight. I think it'll be my coldest night yet. Have fun tomorrow. We'll see you then. Don't be square. Be there. She don't care if you're dying or if you're living or somewhere in between. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my big round baby, and I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She'll shake the coins from your pocket, take your gold chain and your locket. Mother Earth has no sympathy. She'll take the ring from your hand and bury it in the sand and keep it for eternity. Mother Earth, she's got her secrets she's promised to keep. Hidden in her dirt or deep in her creek. Mother Earth, she ain't saying exactly what she's saving, where it is or what it might be. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my big round baby. I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She don't care if you're dying or if you're living or somewhere in between.